<clears throat> and my experience with African independent churches or indigenous churches is that the ones that are really totally oral pass on succession of leadership through a whole different set of criteria than anything to do with paper or literacy. It has to do with spiritual gift. It has to do with seeing visions. It has to do with um, prophecy or preaching ability, that is oral delivery, um, whatever the content is. Um, but it has much more to do with spiritual gifts than how much education you have. Because that's, that's all they have. That, that they're, they're working with what they have. Uh, in the village where, where we lived, there was this old man that I described in my paper who, who knew that the future belonged to another generation. Uh, but he continued to faithfully um, preach and dig into the scripture in a, as limited a way as he had access to. But he invited us to the village um, and designated the four or five people, young men in the village, who they as a group of elders and leaders determined would be the next preachers for the church and had enough literacy that they had they had access to the scriptures. Not very much, because the only Bible we had was a French Louis II, which is the old 19th century King James version of French that has archaic French that not even French people use. Um, that was it. That was the only text we had. There was no translation. So um, these young people, these young men, were the students coming out of morality with a few years of literacy. And the old men would come and sit in the back of the class. So we had this multi-generational thing of oversight. <laughs> a huge responsibility in some ways and trust to say, you know, we're putting our young people in your hands. But we're watching you.